Hey YouTube, I'm gonna make a uh, little forward facing unprotected left video here. Um, the traffic is coming from the front, forward facing view. It should be relatively easy to see the traffic as we go here for this unprotected left with forward facing traffic and how it handles it. Okay, boy, it feels like I'm across the line. I'm probably close. Okay, it needs to stop there. I'm in the lane now, and there was two lanes of traffic coming. Uh, I'm not sure why it decided to jump there. It was a little too far to get into the lane. The left lane happened to be open, so I was actually able to stay where I was without proceeding or reversing. Um, but that first scenario isn't what we're looking for, where it crosses that yellow line to wait. Um, try to get some repeat cases here. Okay, here we go again. I'm gonna go ahead and re-engage now. Got some forward-facing traffic approaching. And slowing into the turn lane is another important thing to watch here. You know, I'm down to 23 and I'm still in the highway lane there. Um, so I, it, in my opinion, it needs to get in this turn lane a little bit earlier before it starts the deceleration uh, like that. But I'm in a good spot here. Um, my wheel is turned, you can see uh, quite a bit which it shouldn't be. I know a lot of folks have an opinion on these wheels being turned, so it's still having the wheel turned. But right now, at least, it, okay, it's starting to creep forward. I can see a large gap coming, but it'll have to use the accelerator if it goes for this one. It's gonna have to stop. Okay, all right. I had to intervene there. Um, it was going for it before that red car passed. It could have made it before that red car if it had started sooner and used the accelerator a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and report that one with the camera shot just to give a few of these um, video reports. I also am gonna send this to Tesla after the fact. Um, we'll, get a, we'll get a handful of these and see how it does on average. All right, here we go again. So it's accelerating all the way up to 30, here. I'm not giving it a full acceleration. It's decelerating still in the lane and in the 20s before it was completely in the turn lane here. All right, and here's the steering wheel turning for the creep. It's maintaining a nice forward view, which should be able to see it. There are a few trees up there. If it, okay, if it, okay, that's good. That was a good acceleration. Nice, the gap was very large, um, but it did it. That's exactly what we want. It, and it, it didn't hesitate in the middle of the road that time. It did not have an aggressive acceleration, but it had a nice smooth acceleration uh, without any hesitancy in the commit. So we'll give it a, uh, a thumbs up on that one. Okay, here we go again. It can roll this one if it wants to keep going. It needs to keep going. All right, it did a good job. Uh, there's two in a row. So that one, it had the gap without the stop, and it and uh, I, I let it roll with it. That car was approaching pretty fast. I was getting ready to hit the accelerator, but I didn't. It uh, was all on its own that time. So um, that forward-facing roll has always worked relatively good for me. If it can find a gap that it sees and it can keep the roll on, it works like that at unprotected lefts with a, with a street light. And I've also seen that behavior just like we saw just then. So whatever they're doing to calculate that speed and distance trajectory, uh, I think they need to, to use as their, their base code for finding these gaps. Okay, I had to wait a little bit for some tra oncoming traffic here. Um, all right, and it stopped there. Nice big gap here, it should go for it. Let's see how the acceleration goes. Nine, 10, 13, okay. Not bad, it accelerated continuously without pausing in the street that time. So I'm gonna give that one another thumbs up. So we're uh, two unsuccessful and now three in a row successful. It's very hard to uh, evaluate the differences between the, um, the gaps and the, and the speed. Um, you know, in continuous traffic and waiting for a small hole, that, that seems to be the most challenging one. But uh, so far, so good. Try to get a few more before my uh, drone operator indicates the battery's going low. 
Okay, I had to uh, engage that one because of a vehicle approaching from the rear, but just to show you a nice smooth, didn't even hesitate one bit uh, without any oncoming traffic. It didn't even stop to take a look. It was a constant smooth roll all the way through the turn. All right, here we go again. Looks like we got quite a bit more traffic. Uh, the light must have just turned uh, down the street. It's about five blocks to the street light. Still in the lane down about 18 miles an hour there. All right, it's stopping way back here now when it sees a lot of traffic, that's good. This is where it ought to be. And the steering wheel in this situation is straight, uh, as also indicated by the wheel there. Now it's starting to turn the wheel. It's not giving me a creeping indication here, it's just doing it. Got a very large gap here. I'm not gonna need to worry about this one at all if it takes it. It's gonna need to go though. All right, now it's too late. Okay, so that is debatable if it had the acceleration whether or not it could have made it. That car had turned down the street and was coming in, so that one was borderline. I have a feeling if that, if I had let that one go, it would have been that you know initial acceleration, and that other car that was accelerating would would have um, come a little bit too close. But I know there'll be some of you that will probably think that was an unnecessary uh, intervention there, but that was just a judgment call. All right, here we go again. Steering wheel straight, stopping in a good spot. It's got a good path. I can hear the brake kind of flickering down uh, at my feet. I'm not, my foot is not on the brake, but I can hear it adjusting. No signal about creeping, it's just sitting here waiting. Got a large gap coming, and it's starting to accelerate for the gap. It stopped. Okay, now it's got a very tight gap. It needs to wait here. Okay, and it did. That car braked a little bit. Um, I'm in a good spot. I'm just waiting on it to give the commit acceleration here. All right, there's a very small gap coming. It needs to go for it if it does. All right, now it's too late. Okay. That, yeah, that was, uh, that was not right. That second and a half, maybe it wasn't a second and a half, that, that amount of time after I saw the gap and it needed to go is when it needed to commit. It couldn't commit after the gap opened up on that one. Um, hopefully the drone will give a good view of that and how it was compressing quickly and when I hit the, uh, the brake to disengage. There is no doubt about that disengagement from my mind. That truck was uh, had full speed. All right, we're re-engaged here. Stopping in a good spot for forward visibility. All right, there's a very small gap that's opening up, but it's not taking it. Now it's starting to creep forward. It needs to stop. Okay. Uh, I'm... I don't know what that's gonna look from the drone view, but uh, it wasn't slowing down as that car was approaching. So I, it's, it's, it feels like there's just a lag. Like the decision that I have when I wanna hit my brake to make one of these gaps, I, I feel like the identification of the gap is accurate, but I feel like the when to go and how fast to go is just a little bit too slow. And then that one second, delay creates a bad decision that it's already kind of committed to uh, and I'm not feeling it back off of its acceleration with you know second guessing itself it's continuing uh, forward that's what it feels like to drive it um, I feel like it's identifying good spots to go just not committing with the appropriate speed to cross safely okay let's talk about what we saw there so I, I think that's an improvement. While all of the uh, intersection crossings were not successful, it didn't stop in the middle of the lane once uh, today. And that definitely was a previous behavior. I think that the, the commit speed uh, of, of a large gap was fine. It, it started and never decelerated and continued the turn nice and smooth. There were a couple scenarios 
where it picked the right gap, but the acceleration to fill that gap was delayed by just the second or the fraction of a second required to get through the hole that was created, being created. Uh, and or if you did wait that half a second, you needed a much more aggressive acceleration to fit in that hole. And, and that was pretty much every disengagement I have was because, because of that scenario. I think that the creeping up on the line, um, I didn't see any of these uh, creeping for visibility uh, messages like we have before. And I think that the creeping towards the line for comfort level with me felt like it was much better. Um, obviously it's hard to recreate exact scenarios, uh, but I felt like it was waiting in the, um, in the straightforward position um, for its opportunity to go a little bit better this time. So anyway, um, that last one, as I was coming across, it started to go, uh, I disengaged, I probably should have let it go um, there at the end. I think that car would have decelerated, but I, I, I think that one could have ended up safely. That was just a judgment call again for me. Um, and then I ended up having to press the accelerator to proceed. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I know this is my third video today, uh, but that's just kind of what you get um, when I have time off and I'm available to test as soon as we get some new software. I probably won't keep up this pace, of course, uh, in, until we get some new stuff, but um, we'll keep it going based on, on your comments and feedback. Let me know what you think. Have a great day.